Okay, so this is our first video in the in the assembly series. Um, I'm just gonna show you a few things that you should be able to do at the end of this series. Uh, uh, so what we have in front of us here is a assembly that I've made, uh, just just to go over the interface a bit. Um, uh, the way you start an assembly is just you hit new instead of part, you select assembly, and then you start your assembly. You name it just like the parts, uh, and then you have this interface right here. So let's go over the interface. It's it's slightly different. Um, you have you have your components area. That's that's the primary thing that you're gonna use. So. Uh, but before I even explain that, the way assemblies work are we have parts that we model and we save those parts separately and in an assembly environment we bring those parts in like this, we click it and then you know I select all these parts that I've made before and I can preview them if I want uh, and this is what that looks like and you know I have a bunch of different parts and you know you bring them together in an assembly uh, you make sub assemblies when you can, and you know you make larger assemblies with those sub assemblies or parts. Uh, it's generally good practice to make as many, well not as many, but you know if there's something that you're going to use repetitively, like uh, for example this stand right here, the stand with the bearing on it. Uh, it I, I made an assembly for it first, a separate assembly. Let me see which one it is. Uh, there we go okay so this whole conveyor belt is an assembly in itself but then when I click down this thing I have separate assemblies of these two stands when I click down on that I have separate assemblies of those stands themselves so so it's using just one one model that I made of this stand, and I used it four times in this assembly for the conveyor belt and then I used it twice here and then you know I had to make these two separate ones because they differ um, in, in the type of features they have uh, because you know I have some slider uh, slot here and not in this one so I had to model that but the point I'm trying to get across is in assemblies you should think ahead of time uh, and, and kind of plan out how you're gonna make things in Creo and just kind of figure out what would be good to have as a sub-assembly and what would be good to just um, uh, assemble in the main assembly itself and another thing I want to try to show you and this is just my way of doing things I don't know how you want to do it but if you have a better way definitely go about it uh, but I like to keep my assemblies all the way up front you can number them if you like but if you look at the titles um, let me just make this bigger here. It's not getting bigger. Okay. Uh, views. Thumbnails. That doesn't help. Details. That doesn't help. All right. So, uh, I, I guess the point I'm uh, just trying to get across is the parts I have numbered, uh, and and even in some of the parts you'll see some of them numbered the same. And that's because if you remember we made a Geneva Geneva mechanism and this is the Geneva drive and wheel uh, wheel it's a wheel um, so I, I number them the same thing just so they're right next to each other and the way this thing organizes your parts and assemblies are based on numbers then the letters you know alphabetically uh, so I have all of my assemblies up front and then I have my parts and the parts are numbered like they should be except you know if they're parts that I'm gonna use uh, in the same assembly that I know I'm gonna use in the same assembly I just keep them together in the same number category um, that's just how I go about things and uh, another thing is if you download any parts off of the internet you know I don't change their names at all I just leave them as they are and you know then you have your part numbers here uh, so this right here uh, well I, I kinda modified it a little bit so right here in front I have the, the model number of the part and then I just say it's a bolt. Um, you don't have to do this but you know when you make your bill of materials you're gonna need um, your part numbers or, or just in general you wanna know what your part number is where you got it from. Um, yeah that's that's that. Uh, but we'll go over how to download parts and open them up and uh, do things with them. Uh, but for now I just want to show something and just get you kind of excited about what we're gonna do so you can kind of see the application of where this is going because I understand parts modeling is kind of boring 
although it might be exciting to newcomers but it gets boring real fast uh, so, so we're gonna do some interesting stuff uh, beginning with uh, I'll, I'll try to explain I guess what this is so this the, the, the concept is it's a stamping mechanism uh, you can have uh, parts going from this side to this side or the, the other way around and as the parts are going in you have this linkage that's going up and down and stamping them with things uh, the stamping could be anything it, it doesn't really have to be something you know forceful it could be just something as simple as you know cutting cutting just one string or just you know pouring something uh, into uh, something pouring something into something uh, but you get the point it's gonna go down it's gonna do something it's gonna come back up and another parts gonna go um, and the idea is uh, you're gonna have a motor behind this and whatever the RPM are of the motor uh, it's gonna have uh, it's gonna move this um, uh, in a start stop motion so so you're gonna have this shaft rotated by the motor so let's just do this uh, and by the way in assemblies uh, this is a little uh, key shortcut that I like to use um, you can click drag components and then you click on the components you know you can move them around like this and it, that's kind of cool right um, and, and that you can do that but there's a quicker way to do that you can hold down control alt click and drag and then you can do the same thing so control alt then left click and drag that's how you move these components around in assemblies uh, so the way this is supposed to work is you're just supposed to have a motor that's uh, that's uh, inputting power from this point right here and that tr that power is transmitted to the linkage and you know it goes up and down but then this is a conveyor connection although technically it's supposed to be a chain uh, but you know in, in Creo mechanism we have an option where we can just say make this a, a belt connection which is essentially the same thing as a chain connection uh, for for the purposes of this model, not you know exactly the same, but what happens is because we have a Geneva mechanism here, uh, this is going to move continuously, but this is going to move the conveyor belt. And let me just zoom in here. And I, I couldn't really find the model for uh, coupling, uh, although I, I could probably if I tried just a little bit harder, but I was lazy. So uh, you, th this is supposed to be connected through a coupling, but what's supposed to happen is as that shaft over there rotates uh, let me just rotate this linkage so as, as this rotates you can see this Geneva gear right here is going to rotate as well and as that rotates if we have this shaft from the wheel the Geneva wheel uh, that's uh, if it's connected to this uh, conveyor belt through a coupling it's going to move the conveyor belt as well so so pay attention to this thing right here this this uh, I just made this as a marker just so you know you can see what exactly is happening so I'm gonna rotate this Geneva gear and watch what happens oh never mind I don't have a connection with that but you know you understand physically um, I guess that I don't know why that connection didn't take can I rotate this at all oh I can okay uh, I guess I just uh, forgot to get the gear connection uh, but that doesn't matter uh, what matters is you know if you have this shaft all the way connected to this uh, conveyor belt uh, you're gonna have start stop motion in the conveyor belt so so the grand idea is this conveyor belt is gonna move the parts in a start stop motion you know one part it comes under the stamper moves away uh, and then the other part comes under the stamper and moves away and they go in any direction and and you know it's uh, controlled and the stamping uh, thing comes down up and down and just you know does its thing and and it's, I just use the term stamping because that's more the most convenient one but it's not necessarily supposed to be a forceful task um, you know it, it has a shaft with a hole through it and you know you can modify this this is just like a placeholder uh, and you can modify to make anything really uh, and and have some kind of attachment that does anything and you know there's a whole bunch of electronic components that would go with that but this is just a concept that I'm trying to show that it's a thing that goes up and down and when it goes down you can control it to do something when it goes back up you can control it to do something um, so this is these these are the kind of things you would do with assemblies uh, you know you, you make this slider cl crank linkage by the way this is this is called the slider crank linkage 
uh, it's because you know it's sliding linearly at one end and you know it's rotating at the other and that's a slider crank linkage and the Geneva mechanism that we made uh, in the in the part series or I guess the parts for it these are the parts this is the Geneva wheel on one side and this is the Geneva drive and if I click and drag here you can see exactly how it's supposed to work and if you remember from the GIF uh, GIF or I don't know what you call it um, whatever you prefer uh, this, this is how it was supposed to move and this is how it moves uh, well this is how it moves and we understand physically oh it's twitching a little bit and that's fine too I guess um, is it uh, I guess that's just gonna twitch alright well, we'll, we'll figure that out later uh, but okay there we go um, so that's 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 the main purpose of making assemblies to, to model uh, to or I guess constrain parts in a way they're supposed to move and then we can do some fancy stuff like um, run motion studies by going into you know mechanisms um, and, and, and and do things with them uh, if, if I run a study right now it's gonna take way too long and I'm not gonna try to go get into that too much but uh, this is this is where you'll do a lot of the studies you go to applications mechanism uh, don't worry about that I don't know what that is but you know you, you see all the, all these uh, little uh, icons pop up they mean something and you'll understand exactly what they mean uh, once we go through them but understand that uh, all the connections are not necessarily made in the assembly environment because when you go go into the application and mechanism you have access to a lot more uh, constraints that you can use and and they're they're a bit more advanced so you know we'll we'll get into them but you know a little little later into the game but I'm just giving you a little a uh, little um, idea of what you what you should be expecting to be able to do and once we're done with this we're gonna get into you know analysis and how to uh, do kinematic and dynamic analyses and how to use those to run finite element analysis and you know do, do the finite element analysis a bit intelligently um, I don't know if that's a word intelligently, uh, uh, but that's that's the end goal. So we'll begin in the next video. Uh.